Welcome to Towing with a Half Ton Part 2, kind of a two-year update. So if you haven't seen my first Towing with a Half Ton video, I'll link it up right up here. Now, in that video, I kind of talked about what I thought about Towing with a Half Ton, how it handled everything. And so this video, I'm not so much going to talk about that part of it because I already did that. But in that video, we did talk a lot about mileage. And in a lot of it, I had said that quite a bit of the freeway, I was cruising at 70, 75. And man, I got some comments about, man, that's too fast, blah, 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 this and that. And obviously, it hurt my mileage. Now, in that last trip, I averaged seven and a half miles per gallon so i'm going to do something different for this two-year update because it is literally almost exactly two years after that trip the truck had eighty thousand miles on the odometer at that time now it has one hundred twenty-three thousand miles on it this thing has towed this rv since that trip to south dakota all around Texas, all over the place. Then it's towed my car. I towed my car over 10,000 miles to races last year. So it's had a lot of towing. And man, same truck and it's holding up. Just in case you don't know, let me tell you what I got here. So this is a 2017 Ram 1500 Crew Cab Lone Star. For those not in Texas, because Texas has its own edition, it's basically the same thing as a Bighorn. It has the 5.7 V8 Hemi engine in it. Eight speed automatic. It only has 321 gears. It does have the basic trailer tow package, but it does not have have trailer brakes then this is a 25 foot flagstaff micro light 25 brds it has a dry weight of 5300 pounds and during the last trip i did weigh this whole assembly and it weighed right at 12 and a half thousand pounds altogether roughly about 3400 pounds on the front axle 3700 rear axle and 5100 for the trailer axles and then to help with towing if you're going to tow the half ton i highly recommend this this is an equalizer hitch all right switching phones because my iphone keeps crashing on me so this trip what are we doing well i am doing the exact same trip i did in that first video two years ago we are going from dallas to orlando and i'm taking the exact same identical route because on this trip i am going to drive no faster than 60 miles an hour so hopefully all you commenters saying i'm just going too fast we'll be happy with this one but we're also going to see how much difference does that make mileage wise i'll keep all the stats records gas logs how much i paid in how many gallons i'll keep it tabs on the odometer and we're going to compare the two so we're all hitched up i will come back and i'll try to update you kind of as much as i did in the first video maybe a little less maybe a little more we'll see so let's get on the road resetting trip gauge First quick update, almost exactly the same distance as a previous vid's first update. Here we are 240 miles into the trip off Highway 49, Louisiana, and this experiment is starting off pretty amazing. I mean, here we are sitting at 9.4 miles per gallon according to the trip gauge, when two years ago at this exact same point, we were only at 7.2. I mean, honestly, I have to say right now, I'm having a lot higher expectations than I started with. But we'll see. All right, day one complete, day one update. We are here at KOA in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Didn't get as far today because downside of going only 60 miles an hour is, well, you're going slower. We are breaking up this drive in two different stays, so basically three days. But we're at 471.4 miles. We're averaging 8.2 according to the truck, which the mileage took a major nosedive after that first gas stop. But we'll see where we get to when we're about 632 miles which was where my second update happened in the previous video which was by mobile alabama so hopefully the mileage will pick back up again but we'll and now here we are coming up to the exit to i-10 campground in mobile alabama and this is where i made my actual first overnight stop two years ago so checking in on our numbers to compare to that it's a bit surprising we did just drive past the stretch of road where i usually see better mileage and that is what happened but we only got up to 9.0 miles per gallon. The surprising part is the fact that that's lower than a 9.2 we had at this exact point two years ago. I can probably explain part of the reasons why though. Two years ago, going through the same parts of Southern Louisiana, I first hit some heavy traffic that kept my speeds a lot lower. And then I hit some heavy, heavy rains going through Baton Rouge, and those kept my speeds down to around 55. So for this section prior to this update, I guess I was technically going a bit faster than I was two years ago. But let's keep going on for now. Day two of, actually day three of three, stop number two, Tallahassee RV Park, on what should normally be a two-day trip, but the 60 mile an hour driving, yeah, we're gonna talk more about that in a minute.
All right, we made it to our destination. We made it to Fort Wilderness, and I'm actually in the exact same loop I was two years ago. We were just in the space right there. Really is a duplication of two years ago. Now let's take a look, see where we're at. We are 1,167.9 miles. Average mile per gallon, 9.7. It actually started going up quite a bit in the last bit of the drive. And you can see the average mile per hour is 52 laps time, 22 hours, 20 minutes. Now I'm gonna put up the screenshot from two years ago of this exact same moment in time the mileage before was 1146 so we have 21 more miles now that is probably due to the fact that one because we were going slower we had to make an extra overnight stop and neither of the campgrounds we were at this time were right off the freeway it was like a mile or two in so there's a good five to seven eight miles or so accounted for right there and then also there was a tiny little section of getting from 49 to 190 in Louisiana where I think there was a bridge closure so Waze had us take a slightly different road which might have added like 10 miles but it was still generally the same route but look at that elapsed time so last time we got to this point in 19 hours and 41 minutes and now it's 2221. That's like two hours and 40 minutes longer. That's insane, especially when you consider that first trip two years ago, we got stuck on a bridge. I think it was on 190 in Louisiana and it was an accident on two years ago and we were dead stop for a good 30 minutes at least. So factoring that in, driving this slow meant what is usually a two day trip turned into a three day trip and took an extra three hours longer driving time. And see the average mile per hour. 52. Let me turn this off so the timer stops counting though. Whereas before we were at 58 average mile an hour, but the mileage is quite a bit improved, which is good, but I don't know what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go through this week, just like I did last week. Now, if we continue this test, well, stay tuned. We'll, we'll see what I decide by the end of the week. I'll come back and we'll talk about that. All right. Well, the week is now over. We are hitched up and we are about to head home, which means my wife and daughter are not very happy right now. But, you know, they tried to convince me to stay in our night. Couldn't do it. But let's do a quick update. So this time around, we actually did not drive the truck all around. We ended up taking just the park transportation buses and all that good stuff. I did do one quick drive, though, and... My in-laws actually came and joined us, but they flew in. So we had to drive to the Orlando airport to pick them up and drive back, which added some number of miles because we're at 1214 now. Anyway, I'm going to get on the road and then I'm going to keep going 60 for just a little bit. And I don't know how much longer I can do it though, because man, driving 60 sucks. Day one return drive done. We are here in Milton, Florida, which is basically Pensacola area. So we had about eight to nine hours of driving yesterday, 400 some miles. We're gonna try and do the same today. Get to Shreveport, Shreveport. Let's give you a quick update where we're at. 1,652.6 miles in, average MPG 10.5, average mile per hour 51, elapsed time almost 32 hours. Yeah, I don't know how much more I can do the 60 mile an hour thing. Anyway, see you at the next update. And we are back to the storage yard. Trip is over. Over. And let me just say, that drive was horrible. That drive sucked, but I did it. I made it 60 miles an hour all the way to and back. So now all I got to do, I need to go gas station, fill up the tank, put it back to where it was when we started the trip, get screenshots of all my trip meters. And then I got to add up all the numbers and I'll be back and we'll talk about all the findings and everything about driving 60 versus driving 70. So see you back in a bit. And we're back and I'm ready to wrap this vid up. But first, we got to go over all the numbers. So here's a shot of the final trip gauge in my truck at the end of the trip. As you can see, we drove a total of 2,350.9 miles, averaging 51 miles per hour for a total elapsed time of 45 hours, 53 minutes and 46 seconds. And we did all that averaging 10.2 miles per gallon. But we know the truck isn't always perfectly accurate. And that's why I kept all the receipts from all the gas stops we made because with that data, we can now calculate the actual mileage that we got. First, how much gas did we end up using? Well, this trip took 261.636 gallons of mid-grade fuel, totaling $916.96, which comes out to an average of $3.49 per gallon. Finally, we have the number we've all been waiting for actual calculated mileage we achieved on this trip while driving no faster than 60 miles per hour is 8.985 miles per gallon. Guess the old Ram was a bit optimistic with its mileage calculation. Although I have to say it's usually not that far off. 
But how does that compare to two years ago when we were driving faster? So two years ago, we drove about 72 more miles. That made a trip total of 2,422 miles where we used 320.933 gallons of gas, which calculated out to an actual mileage of 7.5486 miles per gallon. That means driving no faster than 60 versus just driving with traffic at about 70 miles per hour, we got almost one and a half miles per gallon more. Now 1.5 doesn't sound like much, but it does add up. To make this a bit more fair comparison, let's equal out the distance traveled and remove those 72 extra miles from that trip two years ago. At the mileage we got, that's basically 10 gallons of gas. So to go 2,350 miles, we used up 310 gallons of gas going at around 70 versus just 261 gallons when going 60. That's almost 50 gallon difference. If we apply the same average price per gallon we got in this trip, which was $3.49, that comes out to a savings of $171. Now those are the numbers, but the numbers don't really tell the full story, at least not without including a couple more. While we try to finish this up, I'm gonna put up some footage I took while on the road on this trip. If you pay attention, you might notice something I'm gonna talk about here in a minute. First, one more set of numbers, and that has to do with time. Now again, to make this a fair comparison, we're gonna take out the time and distance driven during the week of my stay in Orlando. So looking at just getting from Dallas, Texas to Orlando, Florida and back, we drove while towing our RV 2,304.1 miles this time around versus 2,350.5 miles two years ago. To go that distance, time spent inside of this truck was 44 hours, 36 minutes and 30 seconds as opposed to only 39 hours, 58 minutes and 18 seconds, two years ago. That means we spent four hours, 38 minutes and 12 seconds longer in my truck to drive 45 fewer miles. If you've accounted for that distance difference, this same trip took over five hours longer. And I haven't even added in the 30 minutes of time that I was at a dead stop in traffic on the bridge in Louisiana two years ago. And as we all know, time is money. All that extra time pretty much wiped out any savings we saw at the gas pump. And that's because, as I've said throughout our updates in this video, all this extra driving time meant we had to add an extra overnight RV park stay each way. I mean, could I still have crammed this into two days? Yeah, but those would be two very, very long days of driving. And that would have been just way too much to ask of my eight-year-old and wife. And if we're being honest, me too. I'm not 20 years old anymore. I promise we're all done talking about numbers though. Now it's time for my final thoughts. I'm sure a lot of you, as I do, start to notice a pattern when you drive the same distance or same route over and over again. And trust me, I've made this trip from Dallas to Orlando a bunch of times. One thing you pick up on, especially when towing, is those sections of road where you tend to get really good gas mileage in those sections where you tend to get really bad mileage. Big thing I noticed between driving 60 versus driving 70 is that when you're in a place where you normally get bad mileage, whether from an incline or fighting a headwind, driving 60 versus 70 doesn't make much of a difference. My mileage pretty much tanked similarly, regardless of speed. The opposite of that is also true. When you're in a place where you normally get good mileage, whether it's going down a general decline or having a tailwind help you out, driving 60 versus 70 also doesn't make much of a difference. Again, my mileage improved similarly, but the majority of your time on the road, you're not fighting headwinds, you're not getting tailwind assist, you're not going uphill, you're not going decline. Things are just normal, meaning your truck is just putting in normal, regular, old average effort. It's in that situation where I noticed the biggest difference. That type of situation, driving 60, is just a lot easier on this truck. That equates to better mileage. The big question though, is would I do this again? Will I change my driving habits to go at a slower pace? Hell no. What's really funny is my wife actually agreed with some of your comments that I'm always driving too fast. Even though I was usually below the speed limit, 
I mean, she's not exactly a speed demon like my daughter sometimes likes to call me, as evidenced by this clip from when I took them out to Texas Boulder Speedway to run in the laps for charity event. All right, Emily, here we go. Hold on to your butt. So when I first told my wife about this experiment, she was ecstatic. And for the first couple hundred miles, especially after seeing the mileage improvement, she was in fact happy at the situation. It didn't last long though. Probably wasn't even a couple hours after that first update when she started to get annoyed. By the start of just the second day, she was already asking me if I could just go back to driving normal. And man, was I tempted. I was hands down as you should have probably picked up on by now in this road footage, the absolute slowest person on the road for the entire 44 hours of this trip. I was getting passed by everyone. I'm talking every single other RV I saw. Didn't matter if it was a bumper pull, fifth wheel, class C, or class A towing a car behind it. Every semi I saw, whether just your normal 18 wheeler or oversized load, they were passing me. Now let me walk that back just a tiny bit here because there was actually five times that I took note of during the entire trip where I actually did pass somebody. One time was a dude that looked like he was 90 plus years old and should not have been on a road. Another time was a guy driving what looked like a 30 plus year old pickup truck beat to hell and honestly looked like it was about ready to break and happen any moment and Honestly, should not have been on the road either. Two times where families clearly doing a long distance move because they were driving a big old U-Haul or Penske box truck and pulling their personal car on trailer behind them. And you can just tell that they had never driven a setup like that and they were just scared. And the final time is technically more than one vehicle, but it was a military convoy. And I'm guessing that they had regulations saying they had to stay at 55 miles an hour. But that's it, literally five times in 2,300 miles of driving. And I have no idea where you other people are driving 60 full in RV. Now I know technically we would never cross paths because we're going about the same speed, but as many times as I got on and off the freeway, slowed down, merged, you would think I'd come across at least one of you at least once in 2,300 miles. Nope. Never did see you guys. Driving that slow and being passed up by everybody like that goes against every fiber in my being. And I honestly don't even know how I managed to handle it for the entire duration of this trip. There were so many times I wanted to just give up. I was thinking of any way possible to justify not doing it on the way home. And I tried to convince myself, hey, the 1160 miles I did on the first half, that would be enough to get my data, to make my calculations and make this comparison bid. I mean, when I started the second half of my trip, I even said in this video, I didn't know how much longer I'd be able to do it. But I pulled through, although I did make one concession. So going from Dallas to Orlando, there's two different routes what I like to call the northern route, southern route. Now, most of the trip is identical, same road. It's only between Shreveport, Louisiana and Mobile, Alabama that you either take the northern route going through Jackson, Mississippi or the southern route going through Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Time-wise, they're basically the same, but the northern route is a bit shorter distance-wise. It just clearly has some roads where you're going slower on, which is why the times equal out a little closer. So on the way back, since I'm going slower anyway too, I decided to take the northern route to cut down on distance and therefore a little bit of time. And that's where a lot of our distance difference in the numbers actually comes from. The terrain is pretty much identical though, so I figured it wouldn't really make much difference as far as my calculations go. And before anyone says anything, I know there's other variables like weather conditions, traffic, wind, and this wasn't a perfect test, but it still gives you a good general idea of everything. I mean, especially given the fact that it was the exact same truck with the exact same RV, exact same setup, exact same hitch, exact same destination, mostly the exact same route at almost exactly the same time of year. 
So there you have it. I drove slow like several of you told me to from that last vid. And it was one of my worst driving experiences ever. I truly could not wait for it to be done and almost gave up several times, but I did it for you. And obviously for me, because I'm interested in finding out stuff like that too. But from now on, I'm back to cruising 65, 70, like all those other RVers that kept passing me up. I'm just going to hang with them next time. So I hope you liked this vid. I hope it was informative. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. See you at the RV park.